I made up my mind tonight to share with you kingdom secrets that makes for productivity. I believe everyone can be productive in the kingdom. I've never believed in having superstars that are uniquely special and must be the ones God will use to fulfill his agenda. I've always believed God can use anyone to do anything at any time in any place if you be yielded to the Lord. And I know that by experience because if God were looking for superstars, impeccable people, I won't be here. There was a time in my life I wrote myself off. You know, if I was the judge over myself and I told myself, you are not qualified. But God still didn't give up on me. And today I'm here preaching the gospel. So I believe God can use anybody. And I believe everyone seated here tonight is a minister of the last day. In 2 Corinthians 5.19, it said, To wit God was with Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses against them, but he gave to every one of them that was reconciled the word of reconciliation. So we have all been given the mandate to reconcile men back to God. So every believer in the New Testament context is a minister, a minister of reconciliation. Praise God. There are some he has selected to be in the fivefold. But everyone is a minister of reconciliation. And that's why I was so blessed by the charge you gave last night. In fact, I told my people to make sure it's, it's premiered separately. So tomorrow they are premiering that, that charge. Everybody needs to hear it. It's a migration from the voice of one to the cry of the army. What a message. Everybody will do this work. And every one of you who will listen tonight, my prayer is that you will be charged up You'll be encouraged and faith will rise up in you to do the work of God in the last day. Amen. Hallelujah. So you may be seated. God bless you. So tonight I want to show you three forces that makes for productivity in the kingdom. Three forces that makes for productivity. I was sharing with my people in the course of the retreat and I told them there are five programs that characterizes the activity of the last days. The first program is the great falling away. The Bible said, The love of many shall wax cold, because iniquity shall abound. Matthew 24, verse 12. The love of many shall wax cold. Not a few, many. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, from verse 1 to 3, and in verse 3 in particular, it reiterated it. It said, The Son of Man will not come, except as many fall away. So that's one of the things happening. And that's why you see many people are becoming godless in our generation. It is a force and a program in the spirit realm affecting territories across the nation. And God has also sent ministers to go into the world to disciple all nations. So while the great falling away is happening, the great commission is also happening. Because that's the second activity that God is raising men. And I'm so happy that the name of the center is Kingdom Ambassador Center. Because that's the mindset. We are all here as ambassadors of the kingdom. And we are on a great commission. The commission is to disciple all nations. If you study that scripture in Matthew 28 verse 18, when he said, go into all the world and disciple all nations, the word there for nations is the word ethnos. It means all race, ethnic group, sphere of influence. They must be one and discipled. And we, the believers, are the ones being sent. That's the second activity happening. And because of the Great Commission, there will be a great awakening. Because we are not preaching and giving information to the world. We are communicating life. We are communicating power. I was sharing with Steve earlier today. He was counseling someone. And I said, listen, when you tell somebody, go and do it. Somebody without the life of God will be giving information. But for you, who is an agent of the kingdom, when you say go and do it, you are not only giving direction. The ability to do it is communicated in that word. So even if the person didn't have the ability because you said go and do it, in addition to direction, you have energized that person. That word will literally enter that person and make that person able to do it. Because we are communicating life. This is why as we go out, we are going to trigger an awakening. 
So it's not about how vast you are. It's about the Holy Ghost walking behind the scene. Because it's the one who convicts the heart of the people. You could tell somebody God loves you and he loses his sleep for two weeks. And I've seen God walk like that. In fact, some of the times I see the move of God's power are times when I was tired and weak. I knew I was not communicating anything. But the Holy Ghost was walking behind the scene. Because in Mark 16, 20, he said, and they went. And he said, and the Lord walking with them, confirming the world with signs and wonders. So they were not seeing wonders because they were smart, intelligent, oratorial in nature. They were seeing wonders because God was confirming the world. He wouldn't let the world fall to the ground. It's on the strength of that that an awakening will be triggered. And after that comes the great tribulation because there will be persecution. In Matthew 24, verse 21, Jesus said there will be so much persecution as has never been before, neither will there be in the days to come. So there is a great persecution coming. Because when the devil discovers that his purpose is failing, he will come with great warfare and affliction, and he will begin with the saints. And that's why Revelation 13, the Bible tells us, those who were clothed with white robes, he said they are the ones who came out of the persecution, out of the tribulation. So there's a great tribulation coming, after which there is the great judgment, the white throne judgment. Revelation 20, from verse 11 to verse 15, he said a white throne appeared, and he said men of all races ran because they couldn't stand before it. And he said books were open. Another book was open, which is the book of life. And he told us two things happened. In verse 13 and 14, he said the first book was the book of works. People were joined according to their works. And then he also told us in verse 15 that the book of life was open. And he said if your name is not found written in the book of life, he said you are cast into the lake of fire. So anybody who does not, does not receive Jesus will not have eternal life. And if you don't have eternal life, you will not be in the record and you'll be cast into the lake of fire. But for those of us who have Jesus, when we approach the white throne, God will look upon us on the strength of the works of Christ. So we will pass through on the merit of Jesus, not our merit. Because the Bible said in 1 John 5, 11, it said this is the record that God has given you eternal life. And it said the life is in the Son. It said whoever had the Son had life. And whoever hath not the Son hath not life. He said, these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. So we have eternal life because we have the Son. And we have the Son because we believe on the name of the Son. Because we have eternal life, the record captures that we are people of life. This is why we will not be judged before the white throne. Because the white throne is a judgment of condemnation. But for those of us who are in Christ, Christ was already condemned on the cross. So we are no longer going to be condemned. Because of Christ's judgment, we will escape. Are you seeing that? In John chapter 5, verse 20, 24 to 26, he said, Whoever, he said, very, very, I say unto you, that he that believeth on him that sent me, he said, he hath eternal life, and shall not come into judgment. He said, but he has passed from death to life. So he will not be judged. He has been judged already. Because when Christ was judged, we were crucified with him. So we have already been judged. But that's not where it ends. After we are judged in Christ and considered just, and we pass through the white throne, then the judgment seat of Christ will appear. Because in 2 Corinthians 5.10, it says we shall all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. That's what he called the books of works. So God will find out the heart with which you served him while you were on earth. Was it with a perfect heart? And when your heart is correct, he will find out the extent to which you served him. So the guy who won one soul cannot receive what the guy who won 100 souls will receive. That's where we'll be separated into cadres, Because in eternity will not be the same. Some will be governors. The Bible says they that overcome, he shall give to have power over the nations. So while some are citizens of the nation, some will have power over the nations. You know, when Jesus was giving the parable, he said, the guy who was faithful with five talents, he said, go and have authority over five nations. So in the world to come, there will be those who have rule over nations. Why others are struggling to be citizens? <laughs> Man, I can't be hustling with citizenship on earth. I still go to eternity. <laughs> My God, I want to be a ruler in that realm. <laughs> ruler over nations. But for you to achieve that level of stature in the world to come, then you must live your life here laboring. This is why we are doing what we are doing. Training ourselves 
empowering ourselves, giving ourselves the opportunity to serve and to labor. Yes, when you labor, you are not laboring for Randolph. You are laboring for your status in eternity. Because the Bible said in 1 Corinthians 4, 5, it said, judge nothing before it's time. It said, wait until Christ appears. He will unveil the hidden things of the heart. He said, then he shall judge all men and we will have praise of him. So when you win souls, when you open up, you know, platforms where people come to worship God, he will honor you, celebrate you for doing that. But that's not your reward. Your reward awaits you in eternity. Now, if you understand that what you are doing on earth has an implication in the world to come, then there is a necessity to do it well. Yes, sir. It is to help you do it well that I will teach tonight. That's what I'm trying to say. And for you to do it well, there are three forces. There are three forces that will make you do it well. And those forces are, number one, knowledge. Number two, power. And number three, love. If you don't have these three forces, you can't do the kingdom work well. You will not be productive, you will not be effective, and you will not be rewarded. And so it's important for us to understand what we receive and how to use it so that we all become relevant in the hands of God. It's on this note that I make bold to tell you that anybody and everybody can be used. If you have knowledge, if you have power, and if you have love, you can be used to any level and any degree in God's kingdom. It has nothing to do with your gender. It has nothing to do with your age. It has nothing to do with your, society, your status in society. You will be amazed the extent to which God will walk in and through you. It will really, really fascinate you. But you must have knowledge. You must have power. And you must have love. So we'll begin dealing with this one after the other. And this is the body of God from time immemorial. Yes, when God created man in Genesis 1, 20, 28, the Bible says, and he blessed him. And he said, be fruitful. He said, multiply. He said, replenish. Subdue the earth. Have dominion. God wants every one of us to dominate this realm. But there are keys to make it happen. And God has not changed his mind. So I have made up my mind to be fruitful, to multiply, to replenish, to subdue, and to have dominion. And I am hoping that everybody listening to me here tonight will also want to be fruitful. Yes, yes. yes. multiply, replenish, subdue, have dominion. Yes. So three things it takes. Number one is knowledge. Let's look at knowledge a little bit and see how these things work. You know, the major problem people have is trying to get what has already been given to them. And so the limitation and one of the major causes of unfruitfulness is our lack of understanding of what we have and a lack of understanding of how to use what we already have. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. It said, according as his divine power, has given unto us what? All things. Is it some things? That means everything you need has already been given. God is not giving you things. If I have time, I will break prayer, the dynamics of prayer down. You'll be shocked that most... <laughs> I, will be, I will be deviated. <laughs> you will see that most of the things you receive didn't come down from heaven. They came out of your spirit. That's what many don't know. Most of the things you receive in prayer, they didn't come from heaven. They came from your spirit. You'll be amazed. When the Holy Ghost entered you, the fullness of God entered you. But it will take power for you to unlock dimensions. There are, there are dimensions in your spirit. Even eternity said he has put eternity in your heart. Not in heaven, in your heart. That means your heart contains more than the whole universe. But many are not aware. So ignorance has caused a lot of crisis. You know, Hosea chapter 6 verse 4. He said, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. That means if they had knowledge, they would all be triumphant. And so we need to understand the kind of knowledge that brings victory. 
And that's what Peter was talking about here. According as his divine power. He said he has given unto us all things that pertains to life and godliness. He said, but there's a condition. Through the knowledge of him that called you to glory and virtue. So you are supposed to function in glory and in virtue. Glory is the fullness of God. Virtue is the expression of his fullness. That is where you were designed to operate. But for you to operate there, the key is knowledge. He has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory. So we were called to walk in glory. I will not walk in anything less than glory. See, this is why it's not good to be good enough. It is good to be God enough. Your manifestation should be equivalent to God. That's what God has in mind. In 1 Peter 2, 9, he said you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, God's own special people called forth to showcase, to manifest, to reveal the excellencies of God. So when people look at you and you manifest, they shouldn't liken you to another person. They shouldn't liken you to any human standard. The only thing they should liken you to actually is that this thing this man is doing, Jesus did it. That's why when they saw the Christians in Antioch, they called them Christians. Everything they were doing was exactly as Christ was doing it. They were operating at the 